Hey everybody, welcome to ETFS Weekly. I'm Travis Yosing alongside Chris Perry. A lot of soccer action to get to this week. Chris was at a huge game between Palestine and Kilgore Boys. Chris, how did that game go down? The Kilgore Bulldogs won four to two over Palestine. They knocked off the defending state champion, Jonathan Contreras, with two goals. One goal right, right just at the end of uh, at the first half, and they got a second goal at the beginning of the second half. Big victory for Kilgore, and they move on to play Dallas A plus, I believe, Dave Dallas A plus Academy in the regional tournament that's going to be held at Rose Stadium on uh, Friday. And uh, talk about the uh, regional tournament for the boys' side. You got Chapel Hill going up against Ranchview in the other game. Yeah, it's going to be a big. It's going to be a big day for East Texas, and it, it would be really neat to have two ex East Texas teams playing in the regional final, and we have a chance to do that. I, I believe Chapel Hill has a very, very tough task going up against Ranchview. Uh, Ranchview's been one of the better teams in the state this season. I'm not quite sure. I, I've, I've started to look into a little bit into Dallas, uh, into Dallas AAA. Is it no? Excuse me, Dallas A plus. I actually thought Terrell was going to win that game, so I started looking more into Terrell. But Dallas kind of surprised everybody and won the game. Switching over to the girls' side of things, you had a long night last night, but it was an exciting one. That's right. Uh, you know, Athens and Kilgore played in a rematch of last year's regional final. Um, you know, the game started at 7, did not end until 10.15 p.m. There was a 35-minute delay for a Kilgore goalie who uh, went down injured, had to have an ambulance come, Carter off. It was the third time an ambulance has been called onto the field for a Kilgore game. So Kilgore, obviously, they have some resiliency. They've had so many injuries, and they battled back there down 2-0 at halftime, came back to tie it 2-2 to send it to overtime. Both teams scored two goals in overtime. First Kilgore scored, then Athens scored twice to go up 4-3 with about two minutes left. You're thinking, okay, this is, this is it. Athens is going to get the win. And then, you know, Kilgore goes down, gets a penalty kick with 25 seconds left, and they score, send it to penalty kicks. And uh, then, uh, you know, the Athens goalie, Michaela Lewis, she stepped up huge, had two saves. Another one went off the crossbar, and Athens ended up winning the shootout 3-1. So they'll be going on to the regional tournament once again. They'll be matched up against uh, Maybank, a school you know right down the road from them, not too far. They played once before. It'll be a good matchup. Uh, Maybank won the first time 1-0, but uh, these Athens girls, the way they've been playing, uh, it's going to be a, a, a great game. How does the regional uh, girls soccer tournament stack up? We've got both boys and girls playing at Rose Stadium on Friday. That's right. You know, in the other one, we've got uh, Palestine and Terrell playing against each other. Um, and, uh, you know, both, both those games should be great games. Uh, Maybank and Athens are both district champions. Terrell and Palestine are both district runners up. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see who makes it to the final. Uh, and uh, whoever makes it to the final, it's going to be battle tested for sure. Yeah, it's going to be a, a neat, uh, just a neat Friday. The, 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 the regional uh, semifinals are going to be on Friday, and then the championship's going to be on Saturday. Switching over to baseball, Robert E. Lee, the Robert, e., uh, Robert e. Lee had a four game win streak heading into their game on the road against Mesquite. They're able to, they able to win some road games. They knocked off Longview, they were able to knock off Mesquite Horn. They were not able to knock off Mesquite on, on Tuesday, so that ends the streak. And that makes Travis, that makes the game on Fridays really, really, really critical because you know how the way the District 11 6 a works, it's a home-and-home -home series for District. They're going to be at home. They need to get right back on the winning track uh, to kind of move themselves up in the standings. Just overall, what have you kind of seen some, from some of the other area baseball teams? Well, I know uh, on Tuesday night, John Tyler's baseball and softball both lost. The uh, John Tyler boys, they lost 15-1 uh, to 1 to Rockwell Heath, which, you know, Rockwell Heath, they're pretty good. Uh, then John Tyler girls, they lost to uh, North Mesquite. 18 to three, but uh, three runs was uh, second most runs the Lady Lions have scored all year. Um, and then uh, in 17-5A, that's still the district to watch for baseball. You know, you got Course County, you got NSC, you got White House and Lindell. Lindell got a big win last night. Uh, in that, that district, uh, you know, that's definitely one to keep an eye on for the rest of the season. And of course, looking at TAPS, it looks like the Brook Hill baseball and softball teams seem to be kind of clear ahead of the rest of the, of the, rest of the chasing pack. Uh, another double-digit victory for both teams last night. They both seem to really just be kind of rolling right mm -hmm. now. And both uh, Brook Hill baseball and softball are both in the TAPS rankings. As is East Texas Christian Academy. They're uh, they're rolling along in district play, and uh, you know they you know they've made a, a history of making it to state every few years, and uh, we'll see if they can do the same again. Uh, make sure you follow us all along on Twitter, uh, ETF at uh, ET Score, and Chris and myself on our own personal handles. Uh, we'll be covering all the soccer action this weekend at Rose Stadium. Uh, we'll see you guys next week.